Thanks uh, again. Um, I'm Molly Theobald, and I'm the director of the Division of Critical Infrastructure. And that's the team that does uh, a lot of the traditional infrastructure you might think of, water and roads and broadband and treatment plants. But we also do the natural and cultural asset um, project management. And if you only look at Appalachia through the measure of economic indicators, some might say the region is poor, but we all know differently. The region is rich in resources, rich in history, rich in culture and creativity. And for generations, the region's natural and cultural assets have been an important source of income for Appalachian, even for folks living in the region's most distressed and isolated communities. And these assets have also been a catalyst for greater regional and community economic de development. In every state of the region, there are communities that are known for their music, their craft, their food and outdoor recreation and cultural history. Some areas have been really successful in capitalizing their assets into entrepreneurial opportunities. For example, the craft industry in Western North Carolina contributes hundreds of millions of dollars to the region's economy every year. But other places are still looking for that special something that will connect the dots to spur its community's economic growth. And that's where ARC can be a partner. ARC has supported many communities' efforts to develop or expand their tourism industry, attract new businesses, and create new job opportunities. When we look at job, uh, project applications, we try to see how that project idea could impact a community's economic health. The variety of project ideas is wide, and the readiness of a community to commit to a strategy var varies as well. Some are just in the, we're still thinking about it phase. Others are ready to plan. Some communities need construction dollars and others are ready to market and promote their assets. I wanna share my screen here. Here we go. All right. An example of a marketing project ARC supported was for Pink Lakes Farm Country in Southern New York. They used an ARC investment to develop a marketing strategy for their farm trail, which was a collection of existing agritourism businesses throughout a five county area. The project helped get more traffic and open up new markets to those businesses. An example of a construction project that ARC supported is the downtown development project in Tacoa, Georgia. ARC funds were used to redesign the downtown business district. The downtown had been improved during this improved, and I say that uh, improved in quotes, in the 70s with the installation of these large concrete barrier or canopies that were supported by concrete columns. And over time, these canopies cracked and corroded and were a safety hazard to the pedestrians. And the columns were damaged from traffic and the whole design prevented to the storefronts. Um, the business district was just dark and gloomy and the vacancies soared. ARC's funds were used to remove the overhang and that investment spawned a whole renaissance for the town's main street and its subsequent subsequently become a really vibrant and award-winning uh, Main Street community. So sometimes ARC funds are used to do a feasibility study to help a community assess if something could eventually generate an economic benefit. One example is the Red River Gorge in East Central Kentucky. This is an amazing gorge inside the Daniel, Daniel Boone National Forest. And the historic Red River cuts through the gorge and over millions of years has carved over 150 sandstone arches. The site is well known in the rock climbing world, but most folks have never heard of it. And the surrounding counties believe that the gorge has a lot of potential to be a real destination draw. So we recently provided a planning grant to help those communities figure out if this is something, if this is something they want to pursue. And if so, how to go forward responsibly so they can preserve that very asset that they want to showcase. 
Now, this was a really big study or a big study for a big expanse of land. On the other end of the spectrum is a planning grant ARC gave to Somerville, Georgia. And that is the home to Howard Finster and his Paradise Garden. Howard was a preacher and a folk artist, and he created his own little garden paradise on a swampy little three acre, three acre parcel of land he owned. He scavenged junkyards to build sculptures and signs and portraits and structures. Um, and he had some fame, fame as an artist and was even on The Tonight Show. Um, when he died in 2001, his property fell into disrepair and a lot of his artwork, which was on the site, was actually sinking into the mud. About 10 years after he died, the county decided, some folks in the county believed that it, the site was really worth saving. So they came to ARC for a grant to preserve and restore the site and open it up to the public. Uh, when we looked at the application, the site and all the artwork was estimated to be only about $250,000, which is, which I couldn't believe it because some of this, this man's pieces are in the Smithsonian. Um, but fast forward today after we gave them a plan and they worked and worked and, and found other funding sources to implement their plan. And that Paradise Garden is now a hub of cultural tourism for this uh, little county um, or this community rather. Um, the property hosts music and movie events, a children's art camp, adult painting classes, holiday parties, traveling art exhibits. And they have a Finster Fest every May that attracts over 2,000 persons. Uh, and lately in the past few years, we've seen a big increase in trail development, mostly biking and ATV and off-road trails, but also hiking and equestrian and even water trails. Um, when we talk with communities about these projects, what we'd like to see is how these trails connect to a community's main street. What is their strategy for getting the bikers off the trails and into the towns to open their wallets and spend money? Where are they going to stay overnight? Are they going to camp and spend very little dollars? Or are they going to get a room uh, at a local lodging business? Are there things to do at night? Are there restaurants or music or something to do if the weather isn't cooperative and they need a plan B for the afternoon? The best example I've seen of a trail system that connects to the communities it passes through is the Great Allegheny Passage. And this is a 150 mile rail trail that runs from Cumberland, Maryland to Pittsburgh. They have an amazing trail town program in conjunction, in conjunction with the bike trail. And these towns have well-marked trailheads, bike-friendly restaurants, lodging, bike shops, and the occasional brewery, which is critical <laughs> if you're doing a bike trail. Um, and these businesses are locally owned and operated and the spending stays in the community, which is what we really want to see. So as the director of ARC's critical infrastructure division, my team works on hundreds of critical, uh, uh, hundreds of infrastructure projects every year, including broadband and roads and water towers and treatment plants. And these investments are absolutely necessary to make Appalachia strong, but it is the region's cultural culture and art and song that make it whole. And I want to applaud your work um, on helping to preserve and strengthen the rich cultural heritage, heritage and traditions and the natural assets for the future generations of uh, Appalachians. So thank you. And to all the schools that are doing presentations this morning, good luck. Um, and I think we have saved the best for last. Thanks. Thank you very much, Molly. Uh, well said. Uh, we do have a couple of minutes. Uh, would you mind taking a question or two if, if students have any questions, Molly? Sure, happy to, happy to try. Any questions? How would a community go about um, contacting you for the purpose of you know, uh, finding out if a town is is viable for one of your uh, research studies on like revitalization. So um, ARC works very closely with our ARC Appalachian State Program Managers. So we always uh, 
whenever I get a cold call from someone in a community, I always connect them with their state program manager and also their local development district. Um, some of the districts, uh, there's different approaches throughout the whole region and in, in New York uh, and Pennsylvania, those districts really work with the communities on the application process. Others, it's the state does the bigger role. So um, the first, first thing is to connect to their local resources. Because, you know, I'm in Washington and I'm not going to be able to assess if, say, Paradise Garden is something we should invest in. I don't know the area um, like the locals would. Um, so I connect them to their local resources. But, uh, you know, as you can, some of the projects I described, you know, some of them were over half a million dollar in grants and some were very, you know, just a couple of hundred thousand, not a couple of thousand dollar marketing plan. Um, so the spectrum is very big, um, but it also depends on the state uh, on how they prioritize their ARC dollars. Um, I don't want to get too much in the weeds on this, but uh, the governors play a big role in which projects are selected for ARC funding. Um, so that's a part that we have to consider. Um, the other thing I will mention is we also have this project called the Appalachian Gateway Program. And that's really targeted to communities that aren't really ready for a grant. They're still thinking about things. And um, uh, we've hosted a workshop uh, and have teams between teams of maybe eight to 10 communities come to a site, come to a place, and we have a two or three day long planning session. And the community brings in three or about four or five community members, someone from the business community, someone from their uh, government, someone from tourism, someone from the arts industry, or the you know uh, arts or uh, cultural background. And they bring a team to this uh, workshop and they work together to think about what they want to do with their, if they want to do something and what they could do. So, and that's, you know, I'm talking, they probably pay a hundred or two hundred dollars to attend that workshop. And we often offer scholarships uh, for folks if they can swing that as well. Um, so it's very small dollars, but it's, it's to get places thinking about how to start. So, um, so there's a spectrum of resources that ARC can provide. Um, and, uh, and that's what we kind of try to cover the gamut. The other thing I would recommend is we have a brand new website uh, and there's a lot of resources on the ARC website about cultural and heritage tourism. So that's a good place to start. Um, nothing beats success, like somebody has already done something in, in the region or even outside of the region. Um, and I also want to plug uh, a recent tourism study that Tim Mazel and the UT team put together, and that's on our website. And that's going to give you some, uh, again, give a community some really great ideas on what's worked and, and uh, how to address some challenges that other rural communities have, have found in this, in this area. <clears throat> 